do you agree with Bob Brown? Is, is a plebiscite the way to go? And do you want a, a vote sooner or later? Or are you swinging towards this argument that we should be waiting until the end of Queen Elizabeth's reign to bring this up again? Look, I think uh, I'm pretty much in agreement with what Senator Brown said. Uh, it's possible to have a plebiscite concurrent with uh, the 2010 election, but the process, uh, when the government uh, bites the bullet, the process should take place during the term of the next parliament, regardless of which uh, party is forming government. In the years 2011 and 12, there's enough time for us to prepare to uh, make sure the public are well informed, have had a chance to discuss things, to feel that they've had a stake in the discussions before any decisions are made. And that's really the issue about getting Australians involved. Because if I could hark back to that first question about uh, why did the 1999 referendum uh, fail, I mean, we've got to be clear that during that uh, referendum campaign, many committed and uh, vowed Republicans not only uh, toured the country uh, uh, vote, uh, advocating the no case, but they, they were amongst the best campaigners for the no case. And they campaigned not because they want to remain as part of a constitutional monarchy, not at all. They want to be a republic, like uh, somewhere uh, between 62 and 73 per cent of Australians. Uh, they want to be a republic. It was only the type of republic that was at issue and I think now we're much closer to uh, a situation where we can have a sensible discussion and the people of Australia can be, uh, can be brought into play and can have some say about the sort of republic that they want. Well, Thomas, and we're just looking at pictures there of the last time Queen Elizabeth came to Australia, and she certainly was welcomed warmly, but the poll I referred to before also asked people if they'd be comfortable with Prince Charles as head of state. 28% said no, 59% said yes. Do you think, Thomas, that the last referendum showed us that there is support for the monarchy, or was it more that people didn't want change? Like, Look, is the support for the monarchy it, there? It's a bit rich for the uh, representative of the Australian Republican movement to go complaining about the model that was put at the last referendum. This was the favoured model of the Australian Republican movement. This was the model actually that um, was put to the convention and when they eventually uh, put it all to a vote, the monarchists abstained, as was the right thing to do. Um, when they put it to the vote, and there was a whole series of votes of all the models and each time the uh, one with the least votes was knocked out. Each time, I think, the uh, so-called Turnbull-Keating model, the model eventually got up, was in the lead. So this was the favoured model of the Republicans. It was the favoured model of the Australian Republican movement. Which is and why, now they're bitching about which it. Which is why Senator Brown is arguing that the yes or no uh, question should be gone, so that's out of the way, and then we focus well, on the debate. Which is exactly what I argued uh, in the Senate in 1998. But um, the Howard government was effectively in control of events and that's not the way the questioning went but it, it, look it's very important to note this as well with uh, I admire the Queen greatly and one thing she's never do not done ever is interfere in Australian politics and yet here we have Malcolm Turnbull effectively saying to her we want you uh, through uh, setting a date at your death to be the determinant of this hugely important question to Australia. I think that's very unfair to the Queen, uh, and I think it's uh, also, in a way, uh, ducking the responsibility he as leader has to also be putting the question back to the Australian people to determine in our own good time. Well, David, so just back to that question that I asked you before, do you think there is actually that support for the monarchy here? Do you um, see that? Do I you do feel see that. I do think there is a support, certainly for the constitutional system. Um, the, the other other 45 percent the royal family itself um, I think I think there's a certain amount of respect but uh, and uh, and in certain quarters a very great deal of respect but what the respect most of all is for the system the system that served us so well for a hundred years and other countries in that time have um, had Republican systems that have risen and fallen but we've had peaceful changes of government mm -hmm. for a hundred years or more and we're very fortunate for it and that's because I think of our system Tony Abbott, would you be comfortable with Prince Charles as our head of state? Do you really think the monarchy is still relevant to Australians? Uh, yes, on both counts, Ashley. Uh, I think that uh, it is in the end the office rather than the office holder, uh, but I'm perfectly comfortable with Prince Charles. Uh, uh, he's not everyone's uh, favourite person, uh, but I tell you what, uh, Kevin Rudd's not everyone's favourite person. Doesn't mean I want to get rid of a system that gives us a Prime Minister. 
if this debate is inevitable that it will keep coming up, Tony Abbott, do you think that it would be the right thing to do to wait until the end of the Queen's reign? Well, it's interesting, uh, if I might draw a parallel, uh, Bob Brown is saying that uh, he wants to be hardline on the monarchy, uh, but humane uh, towards the Queen. Well, I think it's very difficult to say uh, that you love the Queen but you hate the monarchy uh, because uh, the Queen has been produced by the monarchy. It's impossible to imagine uh, a great world leader, uh, a great unifying figure uh, such as Queen Elizabeth without the monarchy that has made her. OK, all of my guests, please do stay with me. We're going to go to a quick break. And after the break, we'll look at the different sort of models that could be on offer.